So over the past few months, Google has been quietly rolling out some new updates in Notebook LM that are honestly mind blowing. But because Google tends to do this pretty quietly, most people don't even know about these updates. So in this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you, show you what's new in Notebook LM and how you can get started with most of them right now, completely for free. Now, if you've never used Notebook LM before, just come over to notebooklm.google.com. This is completely free to use and go ahead and click on create a new notebook. And basically what this is, is it creates for you a custom chat bot that is completely grounded only in the sources that you give it. So it's only able to pull info from the sources that we put in here. And you can upload copy text, anything that you have in Google Drive. You can link to websites or YouTube videos and it'll pull the info from those sites or videos, or you can even upload your own files. And this is the first new update I wanna talk about because now you can actually upload images as well, which you weren't able to do in the past. So for instance, right here, I set up a notebook where I wanna compare the differences between the new ChatGPT 5.2 and Google Gemini. So you see I have a whole bunch of YouTube videos here. I have some websites and I have an image that I took. This is a screenshot of a post from x.com, the announcement by OpenAI, so I threw that in there as well. Now, one thing you'll always notice about Notebook LM is that some sources cannot be uploaded, and it's usually because they're behind some sort of paywall. But in the past, you had to individually delete all of these, but now you can click on any of these and click on remove all failed sources, and they will all disappear. So that's an update as well. But the big update here when it comes to sources is right here deep research. So what you can do is instead of manually adding all these different sources, I can just type in here something like, I wanna know the differences between GPT 5.2 and Gemini and which is better. And on this drop dropdown, I'll select deep research. Right here, you can choose what sources you want. I'm going to have it scour the web and then click on submit. And this is actually gonna go out. This is an agent that is actually searching for you to find all the information about ChatGPT 5.2 and Gemini and any sources that compare the two of them. And then it's actually gonna create an entire report for us. So we can see now that the deep research is now complete and it was able to find 21 different sources. If you click right here where it says view, this is where you can view the comprehensive report that it put together using these 21 sources. And you'll notice down here that it actually cites all of the sources. So I can click right here and open up any of them and read it myself. And then what you can do is you can actually select all the sources that you like and this report and go ahead and click on import and that will then become part of this notebook as well. Now, one of my favorite features about Notebook LM has always been this panel here on the right, which is called Studio, because unlike the middle where you can just chat with all of this knowledge, Studio actually enables you to do some pretty cool stuff with all the information in your notebook. Now, a lot of this already existed, but we do have some new stuff in here as well. So first of all, this infographic studio uh, tool right here, this will actually create for you an AI generated infographic of all this information. So what you wanna do is you can either just click on this and it'll just create for you one that it thinks you want, or what you can do is click on the pencil and actually tell it exactly what you're looking for. So you can choose your language, you can choose the orientation. I like landscape because it gives you a ton of information. And then we also have a level of detail. So you can do concise, standard, or detail. Now, one thing to note is that the more detailed this goes, the more likely it is to make mistakes. I'll show you some examples. So what I'll do is I'll generate one that's concise, one that's standard, and one that is detailed. And finally, you can also describe exactly what you want the infographic to focus in on. So I could say, compare real world use cases of GPT 5.2 versus Gemini. I'll go with the concise one for this version and click on generate. Okay, now all three infographics are done. You can see them on the right. So let's go ahead and open up the basic one. So this is it right here. And I just gave this a quick look over and it is seriously impressive. It does a really good job of understanding all the source material and what the difference is between these two different models. When a real user who's just using this for real world tasks would wanna use one over the other. And it just created this beautiful looking infographic in just a few minutes. I think this is absolutely Stunning, every time I use this, I'm very impressed with what it's able to do. Now, like I said, there's three different versions. So this is the intermediary one, which again is called standard. So if we look at the standard one, this one is gonna have a lot more information in it. This is actually quite detailed. I thought it would have a little bit less for the standard one, but looking over this one, it obviously goes into a lot more details, like the different benchmarks for the AI models and things like that, but I don't see any mistakes on here. You know, this is an image. So all this text here, this was rendered on an image and it all appears to be 
accurate. I don't see any mistakes with any of the text, but let's go ahead and look at the detailed one. This obviously has a whole lot more going in here. I personally think that this is like too much, like it's actually hard to read the text because there's so much on the screen here. But despite that, I actually don't see any mistakes in here. There, It is possible that there are some, the more detailed it gets, the more it tends to make mistakes, but I think it's done a fantastic job of just comparing them and rendering all the text as well. Now, another relatively new feature is this one right here called Slide Deck, and this will basically turn all this information into a PowerPoint presentation. Now, again, you can just click on this to generate it, or you can tell specifically what you want. So there's two different versions of this. There's the Detailed Deck, and there is the Presenter Slide. So Detailed Deck basically has all the information on the slides, where presenter slides will show a nice, clean, visual slide, and then the presenter is gonna have their notes while they're talking about what's on the slides. So there's gonna be less information on these ones. You can do a short length or a default length. And again, you can describe what you want the slide deck to focus in on. So we can talk about, maybe for this one, how GPT 5.2 is performing on the different benchmarks and the target audience are individuals who don't understand what the benchmarks mean. And then here you can see it's actually generating that, again, based on all the sources inside of this notebook. And while we're waiting for that to generate, if you're enjoying this video, do me a quick favor and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. I'm constantly releasing videos just like this one where I go over new updates to all these different AI tools, including Notebook LM. So if you don't wanna miss out on future videos, you definitely wanna make sure you are subscribed. So here is the presentation that it put together. Immediately, I think this first graphic looks super cool. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the slides. So this one says the AI landscape was shaken in late 2025 when Google released Gemini 3 which immediately topped the industry leaderboards, which immediately resulted in OpenAI issuing a code red and then finally releasing GPT 5.2 in response to that. That is amazing. The way it was able to kind of digest all that information, this is the way I would have explained it, exactly the way it's being done in here. Super cool. And now moving through the slides, you'll notice that it does a fantastic job of explaining what all these different benchmarks mean to a casual user who doesn't understand benchmarks. So for instance, this one, it, it first it says, how do we test an AI's mind? So it gives three different ways that we test it. And then here you can see it discusses test number one, which is pure problem solving. And it says, this is the analogy, imagine a test of abstract visual puzzles you've never seen before. So it measures a raw problem solving, not just memorized knowledge. So super cool the way it's able to explain it for the casual user. And I think all these slides just look absolutely fantastic. Okay, so the next update is one that I think a lot of people overlook how cool this is or really that this even exists. So if we come over to video overview, if you've never used this before, this basically creates a video of all of this information. But there's been an update here because if we click on the pencil icon, you can actually choose which visual style you want. So you can do a custom one, the classic one, whiteboard, uh, anime, watercolor. There's a whole bunch of really cool ones here. I have not yet tested out watercolor, so I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to go with a brief, and I'm just going to click on generate. Now, while we are waiting for that to generate, because the videos do take a little bit longer than the other ones to actually generate, there's another quick feature I wanna show you. So if you click up here where it says configure notebook, I really recommend that you do this for every single one of your notebooks because this allows you to customize how the notebook sort of acts and how you are able to have a conversation with it. So there's three different styles here. There's default, there's learning guide, and then there's custom. Now what's changed here is that now inside of custom, they have an expanded number of characters that you're allowed to throw in here. I think this used to be only 500 and now it's at 10,000. So you can really customize this and give it very specific instructions on how you want it to be able to digest all this information and how you want it to talk with you and the conversation you want it to have with you while you're chatting with this notebook. Okay, so our video is now ready. Let's go ahead and give it a watch. Okay, the AI arms race is heating up. It's GPT 5.2 versus Gemini 3 Pro. So, who's the true champion? But wait, don't count Gemini out. In cybersecurity, it's an absolute beat. Hey, in the office, Gem Hey, that's super cool. I, I love this new styling aspect of it. And obviously, for this sort of presentation, watercolors doesn't make a lot of sense. You probably want something a little bit more techy or professional looking, but it's a really cool effect. They are able to really dial in exactly the style of the presentation that you want. I think it's awesome.
And I gotta say, Google has been cooking recently because after I recorded and edited this entire video, they came out with another update to Notebook LM that we have been asking for for a long time. So now, from this point forward, if you come into any of your notebooks and you actually chat with them, the history is now saved. So in the past, every time you came in here, you weren't able to see your past chats. Now, going forward, you will be able to see your chats. You can always click on these three dots right here though and delete your chat history. And when I said they are cooking, I really meant it. I re-edited this entire video and they came out with another update before I could even release it. I just cannot keep up with all the updates to Notebook LM. This next one is super cool, something we've been waiting for for a long time. Now inside the Gemini app, if you click on the plus icon, you can attach any of your notebooks and actually chat with the notebooks directly inside of Gemini. But it gets better than that because you can actually select multiple notebooks, which is something you cannot do natively inside of Notebook LM. So think about it this way. Let's say you're preparing for a class and that class has multiple different subjects you wanna study for throughout the year. You create a notebook for each subject and then at the end of the year for the final, where everything's gonna be on the same test, you can actually have all of the notebooks in here and chat with all of them to help you study for the test. So a super cool feature that they finally added to Gemini and Notebook LM. Now the rest of the features I wanna show you will be on the mobile version of Notebook LM. So let's jump on over to my phone. So like I said, there are some new updates to the mobile version as well. So first of all, when you come over to sources, you will now see this camera icon. So you can actually take pictures and upload them into your notebook directly. Super, super helpful. In addition to that, we now have infographics and slide decks on the mobile version as well. You can not only view them, but also generate them, although they don't have the pencil icon yet. And in addition to that, if you come over to chat, we've had this ability for audio overview for a while, but now it will actually remember where you left off. So if you exit the app or go to a different notebook and come back, you'll be able to resume exactly where you left off. So that's super helpful. It was a huge pain point for a lot of people and they finally solved that. And one more pro tip for you guys, this isn't an update, but it is super cool. I just learned about this and I find it extremely helpful. If you have any sort of voice memo app on your phone, which you should, you can just record voice memos throughout the day. Maybe you even can record them on your watch and they sync up with your phone. And then what you can do is you can select any of those voice memos, go ahead and share it and share it with Notebook LM. It will then ask you which notebook you wanna share it with. And now that will then be added as a source. So you can literally just brain dump a bunch of ideas into a voice memo app and then throw them into any of your notebooks as a source. This is super helpful for any students. They can actually record all of their lectures and throw them all into a notebook. Super cool. So those are the latest updates in Notebook LM. Some pretty impressive stuff, especially if you're doing any kind of research or content work. Now, if you wanna learn about another really powerful Google tool that I love called Google AI Studio and some unique ways that you can use it, make sure to click on this video right here. I go over some of my favorite use cases that you can start using right now. So click right here and I'll see you over there in just one second.